good evening and uh, thank you very much, Feroz, uh, Frida, and all of you for inviting me and the other panelists to this session. Uh, this is the first time that I'm coming to IAS and I was telling both Feroz and Frida, I know what I missed last year. It's a completely different kind of an event. But let's get into the subject of our discussion. Um, I think one of the most important things is it cannot be just the person with disability who is looking after his or her interests. It cannot be corporates alone. It cannot be government alone. There needs to be a collaboration. Unfortunately for us, that has not been as good as it should be. Many a time, we say that the person with disability and their family are the ones who actually take it on. And it becomes their responsibility. It is different. It needs to change. And you know, when we say that we are inclusive as a society, we care for others, we have more family ties than we have in the West, etc. really we are not. Asian societies have a tendency to say that we do not have people with disability in our midst. We try to ignore that. Families don't want to talk about children with disability in their family. So whether you go to big places like Singapore, and you tell them you want to see an institute, and they'll say, I don't know, I don't think there's one. You talk to China, they think that there is nobody there with a disability. Well, you go to the West, and I was telling somebody earlier today, during Abraham Lincoln's time, they set up the Gallaudet University, which is the university for the deaf. Today, even today, a degree from there is signed by the President of the United States. But for us, we really don't even have higher education opportunities for most persons with disability. Some changes are happening, and I was happy that you had the minister and the secretaries here, we, we have that here. You have corporates here. So in a way, this is probably the first place where I have seen a convergence of the various stakeholders that we say are going to be. Let me just take a minute or two, and the model that we said is we would take about two to three minutes each to, to give our points of view, after which we would open up for questions, and what I would like to do is we would listen to a few questions that are there, and then we will go for a round of uh, uh, round where we would each close and respond to some of the questions that are there. Let me tell you from my experience in Kerala, one of the things which is required is you need to have a political leadership which understands what disability means. You need to have a leadership which will which will take into account what people in that sector are talking about. It cannot be a portfolio which is given to somebody whom they don't, who just they want to accommodate. So the minister, Ministry of Social Justice in many places is somebody where they want to give it to somebody because they need to give one ministership to that individual. That should change. And one of the things which we did when this present government came in is that we set up a working group for persons with disability and some of you would know Rahul Charyan, who's no more with us. Rahul chaired that session, and Rahul was from the National Law School here. He chaired that session, and we had experts from around the country who were part of that. And they came out with major recommendations, and there are around five pillars that it is there. And we will probably talk about one of them and then get into the, to the discussion after that. The five pillars we've said is prevention of disabilities. What do we do for prevention of disabilities? The second one was early detection. The third is early intervention. The fourth is rehabilitation. And the fifth, which we practically do not have in this country, is higher education for persons with disability. I should also tell you that we were, uh, we were lucky that in the last union budget, Mr. Jaitley's only mention on Kerala was upgrading NISH as a national university for disability studies and rehabilitation sciences. And our objective is that anyone studying there, it should be the IIM or the IIT, or the Cambridge or the Stanford or the, or the MIT, in the area of disabilities where it comes to disability-related research or higher education for persons with disability. We have a reservation there. In the programs for persons with disability, we have a reservation. It's what I would call a reverse reservation. We will reserve seats for persons who do not have a disability. Because today, and I was quite happy with some of the discussion that were there, where you know, people said 
Just they are all, we all have special abilities. Now you want to look at the quality of education that is imparted should be at that level by which you want others queuing in for admission there. And what I like about what's been happening in our country over the last few years is the corporates have taken on to themselves without a law, without pressure, that they need to start employing these people. And one of the things I notice is that it is very scientifically done. I know Annis should be somewhere here. I've met a couple of other people also. Is that companies say that we want to recruit persons, and then they say, let us create, let us sensitize, let us create the right environment, let us have our people work with them. Because the objective is very clear, they want anyone who comes on board to be successful. You are not looking at sympathy anymore. It is empathy. You need people who understand that persons with disability actually add substantial value to the companies. They add substantial value not because that is a CSR work that they do, but every company who has employed persons with disability have found that they have gained substantially because the productivity of the teams where, these, where uh, the person with disability work, it becomes substantially more than the other teams. There are at least five or six companies with whom I've interacted who've said that. I'm not going to take too much more time. Let us first start with what, what do you all do? What are the kind of thoughts that are there on how we could have all the stakeholders collaborate together? And, and I was telling earlier, a bit ruthless, I'll stop when it is two and a half to three minutes, okay? So that otherwise we'll overshoot on time. Okay. Uh, let me take, uh, uh, from the point of view of the, bear, uh, the hat I wear, which is uh, uh, running a large company here, uh, and the point of view that I would take is why it makes business sense. Um, so we are a com technology company uh, that's been around for over 25 years um, uh, in the IT industry. And our industry gets disrupted every few years. And uh, the only way we can stay um, in the business is to keep focusing on innovation. We, I mean, we need to be creative, we have to churn out uh, products and technologies that the market wants um, every few years. And Innovation is an important thing, and that requires us to build diverse culture, perspectives, and uh, creativity should be part of uh, how we do business. And uh, so talking of creativity and innovation, diversity and inclusion is part of our people's strategy. And the other thing is the financial view. Uh, if you were to read uh, um, uh, a McKinsey report, um, uh, uh, it was published a couple of years ago, that says uh, uh, board, boards that had women board of directors had better um, uh, return on equity than the ones that didn't. And similarly, um, in a, uh, another report from, um, I think, Deloitte uh, also said you know, companies that had included diversity and inclusion as part of their talent strategy uh, had better cash flow. Uh, the, the, the bigger ones had uh, two and a half times more uh, better cash flow than the ones that didn't. And the smaller companies had even higher, uh, uh, 13, as high as 13 times uh, uh, higher cash flow than the others. Uh, so it makes financial sense. As we talked about, uh, thought about diversity and inclusion here in India, we really wanted to take it uh, in its true sense, uh, you know, in the local context. Um, uh, gender is easy for all of us to follow, uh, but we wanted to make sure um, uh, disability is also part of it. Uh, and in Indian in the context, we also want to make sure that rural and urban is also part of our diversity and inclusion. And coming to diversity, um, sorry, disability, uh, the best decision we made was, in the, uh, I allowed one of my colleagues to make was, uh, in the eight year time, was hiring people who was right in front of me here. And that changed the whole game for us. That really allowed us to learn what ability really means. And um, uh, subsequently, um, you know, a few years ago, we formed this group called the Disability Empowerment Resource Group. And, um, and this is something that uh, we learned that we can't do it alone. We need to partner with uh, Enable India kind of uh, uh, organizations for us to learn and also to um, uh, educate our own employees and managers and leaders uh, how to deal with this, how to enable this happen in our organization. And the next thing we did was, of course, uh, uh, changing our organization policies and processes and working with them, learning from them, and, uh, and putting in the right control points in our processes to ask the right question, who can do this job? And then once uh, uh, done that, we also uh, ramped up our hiring. You know, it took about a few years for us to learn, uh, working with uh, our outside partners, 
Uh, but today, um, I, I'm happy to say that uh, uh, we tripled our number of uh, uh, folks with disabilities in our organization, and also, but that, this year, we take on the world. If, you know, if this is important for us, we have to put our money where our mouth is, we'll double it this year. <laughs> we have a long-term goal as well. We, uh, we want to go after 5% of our employee base uh, of people with disabilities. And uh, that's a goal we are working on. And uh, the message that I've uh, given to my organization is, if, uh, uh, if someone in our own house, a brother or sister, uh, or one of our child, uh, children has uh, any form of disability, how far we would go, we would move mountains, right? And we would uh, make sure we will do everything to make our home um, uh, the, a great place for them. We will do what, whatever we can to make EMC the best place for them. Um, uh, you've, been a, you've been a role model for many. You've also been, I don't want to use the word, use the word activist, but in a way, you have been responsible for a lot of change, especially in terms of persons with disability getting into higher education. What are your thoughts? <clears throat> so, <clears throat> today we are here to dream. Dream of those in India which would include voice of those who cannot hear. Dream of those in India which would include voice of those who cannot see. Dream of those in India which would include voices who cannot move. Dream of those in India which would include voices who cannot be heard. So, this is a vision which was kindled by one single man, and today it has potentials to transform. So my thoughts, very simple. We alone cannot blame the government, because government alone cannot solve the society's problems. There are five stakeholders involved in, which can actually work for tomorrow in making the better place, making an India inclusive. The role of government to do their job just to implement whatever the act is, to synchronize all the government departments to follow the act or to follow the goals, and to learn and emulate from the best practices in the other in the Western world, like countries like Canada, who has a very clear-cut action plan. By 2025, they are going to make each of their social, economic, and physical infrastructure barrier-free. For an NGO partners, just collaborate, 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 and learn from the industries what is the skill sets required. I think the best what we have witnessed yesterday was the Enable India Academy, which I actually wrote in my article in one of the leading magazines called yeah, People Matters which the link is, I hope that it's being displayed on the screen. Well, persons with disability themselves have a role to play. Acquire skill sets, work hard, because we've been listening to the speakers, and no one's, even all of them has testified the fact that there was no shortcut to success. Remember, you are the biggest change agent. When I see Suman, when I see Swati last night, that was a change which I brought about. <coughs> it was the reservation quota for the disabled across IIMs, IITs, and the Indian University. I may not be the direct beneficiaries, but it has reaped the seeds, and they, they are actually empowered to live a full, inclusive society. <clears throat> well, the third role I would like to emphasize is the society at large. How will they play a role? They are not connected with this disability. Well, just to narrate an incident which happened yesterday. I was in my hotel room here itself. The phone line broke. When I tried calling them frantically so I can come down to the, and attend the function here tonight, the landline was not working. I didn't want to call Feroz, sir, he had uh, millions of things to do. I didn't want to call Shanti or Dipesh, they would probably have millions of things to do. So I decided, let me call Jaydeep, 
Jaydeep Rao, which I, I know he's busy, but still let me try. He said, sir, don't worry. I'll solve this problem in a minute. And within two minutes, I was down here. Jaydeep's, for him, it is a simple act, but he walked the extra miles to make that, to foster an inclusion. What I, <clears throat> thank you, Jaydeep. <clears throat> When I walk with my friends in America, they would take the time to explain, okay, this is a beautiful hall, because they all know I cannot see. They wouldn't even take time to describe the woman, oh, she's so good looking, beautiful, beautiful. They wouldn't even take the time to explain me the surroundings. But when I walk with my friends in India, they would not even tell me that there is a stairs and I would probably fall. What I'm trying to demonstrate, that society in large, we should have, we should work towards where this is ingrained in our culture of being inclusive. Thank you, sir. There's just one uh, interesting comment, you know, when you talk, I know that you, you fought for the reservation in IIMs and IITs. Some, a few years ago, there was a big issue on the IAS, and there was a very senior of, IAS officer from Kerala who actually made a statement saying that, how can you have people who can't hear or see work in positions of power. So, sometime later, there was a public function with a crowd bigger than this. And, you know, he was there and I was there, and I said, you made a statement like this. It is better to know that the person to whom you are speaking to cannot hear, or the person to whom you are speaking to cannot see, rather than a person who can hear pretends he can't hear, and a person who sees pretends he can't see. Absolutely. So basically, I think this is not, it is more about the mindset and the ability that is important there. I'd just like to narrate one incident. Um, for my PwC work, I was uh, doing my travel and one of the airlines, they actually saw me walking with my cane coming alone and they said, hey, are you blind? I said, yes. How will you fly? I said, just like everyone else, I paid my tickets and I went, but it is against the DGCA guidelines to let you fly alone. I said, sir. I was a part of that national committee which actually drafted the guidelines. How can that be? <laughs> you know, the story is, the, it's a long story. I will, I'll, I'll give it a trailer so at least Feroz can invite me next year uh, to, uh, to give me a chance to conduct, a, uh, to share the whole story. So what the story was, the consequences are immense. That person lost his job and the Kingfisher also vanished. Thank you very much. <laughs> It'll be good about if you can tell what the expectations are, what yeah. the company wants. So let me start uh, with one thing that uh, I'm very new to this space. Uh, so I've been working for almost 25 years. Uh, but I think understanding this space uh, has, the journey just started two years back for us. And I can tell you one thing uh, which we have been trying to do is not what we can do to this uh, community, but what they can do to us. And that understanding I think we are gaining better and better over the last one year. It's been a phenomenal experience for us to have people of different able working in our company. I think the way they influence the culture, the way they make us better people, I think is a journey that we just have discovered it. We haven't even started it. And the journey is so beautiful that I can tell you, it can't be counted in dollars, it can't be counted in rupees, it can be counted in blessings. And blessings is the biggest uh, thing that a corporate looks, because corporates are only pursue ways to make money. When I go and give a report to my, uh, to my uh, seniors in uh, different parts of the world, they all ask about bottom line. Not, nobody asks for anything else. But I feel, when, uh, from since we have pursued this path, I think it's been a different blessings that we are getting. And I can tell you one major thing that w for which we do, a lot of parents are sitting here. I've been fortunate that I have a kid who is normal. But I can imagine if we provide employment to them, we provide equal opportunity to them, see the joy in their parents' eyes, and, uh, and that is something which I have experienced myself. And it's much bigger than anything, anything in this world. So for us as a company, it's our main mission today. And it's a journey, as I just said, we started a year, two years back. We're going to just build it on it. It's the only thing as a company we do. We are not unfocused as far as our CSR are concerned. And our journey is not about hiring people. Our journey is about experiencing it. Every month, we have a job fair in our office. We see so many people coming in of different label, physically impaired, all kinds of people, but they're walking into our office is a blessing. 
It's an inclusive space in the true sense, because people are now normal. And I want to give you a small story of how I understood inclusion. We had an autistic kid who we hired. When we hired him, a lot of people were scared because I think they come in a very different way. And what happened is that he went into a lady's bathroom. Okay, so you can imagine in a corporate, we have 2,000 people, we have all the guidelines in this world, and the first thing that they told us is that we need to fire this guy because he broke the rule. And maybe we would have done it if he didn't understand inclusion. The real inclusion is to understand that he did it innocently. It is us to be included, not him. And that is the journey, and that is the time, I think. We make this as a mission, as something that we are so devoted to it. We hope that we can contribute more and more and make not just hiring people, but make it a journey and an experience for us. Thank you. We'll, we'll open up for a few questions. Uh, what I would say is please raise your hand. Somebody will reach a microphone to you. And uh, you can please be brief. Let's try and see if we can take at least three or four questions or five questions at Z. As somebody raises the hand, one qu out the microphone reaches there. One thing which we need to do as society, as parents, as stakeholders, is to make people in positions of power understand that this is important. We need to very clearly tell them, any questions, please raise your hand, the microphone will reach you. We need to very clearly tell them that this is a very important constituency. We need to tell them that over between 3 to 7 percent or 8 percent of the persons are disabled, which means have a disability, which means if you assume an average size of 4, okay, it could be anything between 24 percent plus. And no politician in this country wins with a bigger margin. So you have to make them understand that this is important. Okay? So please, you had a yeah, Hi. Um... If you could identify yourself and be brief. Sure. <clears throat> so I'm Pradeep Matthew. I work for EMC. And I, I a strong believer and supporter for autism. And I, I run a community called uh, I Am Different. So the question is uh, disability, right? We have invited a lot of people here, right, with disability. They're very special, of course. But awareness is required for the public, which is the percentage is very less. How are we, as a group, can do something to create awareness to the public? Because I don't see a lot of public here. It's us all the time, every year. Good. We'll get back, we'll get back to the answers later on. Anyone else? Yeah, there's somebody right at the back. And if the next person can raise your hands, and I'll get a mic to you also. Hi, uh, Sunil Matthew for the IAS for the last three years. Uh, been following ASIF around, actually. And Mr. Vijayagun, sir, this is a question actually directed to the government partly, and then I can ask ASIF also. Um, a census. We, spoke, we heard Mr. Keswani uh, from Le the Lemontry Group talk about how about a differently abled census, a very basic thing that can address uh, you know, inclusion, employability down the line. Why not have a proper census taken and you know, uh, a scientific way of doing this? My second question is, um, Asifji, I've been asked, I asked this question earlier this year in a session. Um, CSR, is that redundant? Do we look beyond it? Because there are no laws. Companies are still doing what they want to do. Uh, there is, there's very limited penalty for it. Uh, if you can just address that. Thank you, Asif. Yeah, the lady there. There's a lady at the back. Hello, good evening, everyone. I'm Kavita Sharma. Uh, I have hold it closer so that we can hear you. Yeah. I have a, a suggestion rather than a question uh, that all the corporates, wherever you guys have any success stories or the failures, if you can document those and share with us the NGOs and other parent bodies and training organizations will be more equipped to bring in the employable youth. So if good, you can work on that. Good Thank suggestion. You. I think there's one, there are two people there. You can be quick and then we have, I'll take this last question from the lady up front. Hi, good evening. This is Sabujkar. I work for IBM. Okay. 
Can I? Okay. So my question is, can we have any reservation in terms of percentage for the corporates? Like year on year, can they have 5%, 10%, 12%? Can, can we have some kind of reservations? Probably Asif, this will Asif, will, this. Asif will answer that question. Okay. He's working on something there. Okay. okay. Yeah, there's Thank one more you. person there. I'm uh, Vasuki. I'm the father of one of the hosts today. And as he has already mentioned, that he has attended about 50 plus interviews after MBA from IIM Indore. And I was losing confidence in me and my son, but he was still holding up. He said, I will land up a job, don't worry. But this is the way it is happening that he has been interviewed in every company, right from the general manager to the president and the chairman. But finally they say, we don't have the present situation with us. Whenever we have, we will call you. This is the type of this one that corporates are treating this type of inclusion, so-called inclusion. And uh, I don't know if you say 5%, 3%, 7%, but until it is put into incorporation, it's of no use talking like this. And people who are at the helm of affairs should put in and they should call the HR people and see to that it's being incorporated fully. The last Thank question you. from the lady up front. Yeah, 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 yeah. there's a lady here. Somebody there, okay? And I promised you other things, so you will get the last question, okay? Next, the microphone will come up front, huh? please. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. I'm Maria, and I'm a parent of a child with cerebral palsy. I'm a special educator as well, and I've been in this field of the so-called rehabilitation. You can get to the question, please, yeah. Yeah, so my question, uh, not a question, uh, it is an observation that I've been making from morning. So you rightly pointed out about awareness, early identification, early intervention. So if that has been happening since very long time, I think we would be definitely you know, bringing down the statistics if it was done on a war footing. Because according to some statistics, they say 90% of the disability in India falls under the preventable category. So not only sensitization, someone was mentioning about the parents, the public coming into such forums like this so that we can spread what all is happening. And from morning I noticed that most of the uh, organizations or most of the people who were on the podium, they were talking so much about the entry level and even lovability speed meeting, but this is all happening with people who have certain skills. But we have to address the other part of the community or the challenges that we as parents are meeting when our children are nonverbal, when our children are not able to even get into the entry level of jobs. Lamentary has clearly pointed out, and I appreciate them, and one request to the corporate is, please tell us what are the skills you're looking for so that organizations like us, the NGOs, can start training our children right from the beginning, even if they are not able to lead, write, or do whatever, but at least they will be taught some mechanical skills which can bring them an employability. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks, Pointing. And the last question will be here. Uh, hi, my name is Swati. I work for IBM and I'm an alumnus of IM Bangalore. Uh, my question is, uh, though there are so many initiatives for hiring persons with disability by the corporates, which is of course very, very much appreciated, uh, I still face a challenge when it comes to career progression. So I've seen a lot of my colleagues and my seniors when uh, they, they would stagnate in their roles. They just like to understand what is the role of persons with disability to have a good career ahead, and at the same time, what would be the role of the organization or the corporate to help this happen? Good. Thank you. Good. Very good question. Um, what we're going to do is, I think we'll now respond. May I request, uh, maybe you could start yeah, Let off. me start with a couple of things, uh, uh, two questions uh, that came. One is, um, 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 
the, what kind of jobs that we can train them for. And that's the kind of partnership we established with uh, Enable India, for example. We we'll publish, we work with them to identify the kind of jobs that we can hire them for, or, and they source and train them for us. Uh, uh, you know, you know, and we've taken it to a totally different level working with them uh, through a program called Redefine Abilities, uh, people with multiple disabilities, profound disabilities. And we have, uh, we're concluding as I speak now, uh, a pro uh, the first internship program we worked out with them, um, with 10 <laughs> interns, and all of them have found jobs at the end of uh, internship within our own company. Okay, that's one. Uh, I think that process is there, examples are there, and you can work with some of us, um, companies like ourselves. Um, the second is uh, career progression. Uh, there are a number of successful examples we have in our company. Uh, you know, there is no, there is no uh, limit, uh, I would say. Uh, for example, um, uh, a colleague that I have called Shalini, um, she, you know, started off in our service business, um, but her ability is, to, ability is learning, incredible learning. And when a lot of us ask for concession, she would ask for more, and because of her ability to learn faster. And today, she's part of our core R&D group. Um, uh, you know, so that's the kind of career progression we've been able to give for the right, uh, you know, as long as they have um, the, the right skills and uh, they're able to learn. And similarly, there's another um, uh, individual called uh, Sriranga Prasanna. Um, he is today, you know, when we started, he was not there, but today he is the face of uh, one of our products called Secure ID. Uh, it's, it's a $500 million business for us uh, when it comes to customer support because of, uh, because of his ability towards customer satisfaction and the passion for satisfying customers. I think on the same note, I think I know Feroz and Sridhar are not talking, but I know that they initially took in uh, young people for, for the testing process. I know that one of them is now working in the design area. So very clearly there is an opportunity. Remember, it's very new that companies have started doing it. So we need to give them time to settle. I know we are impatient. We need them to work faster. But what they're doing, we need to appreciate. And I'm sure they will find the value. Your, your case is a very good example of how you've grown. Companies asking you to travel. Okay? Which earlier, people would not. I had a case of someone without any disability 10 years ago where the parent calls up and says, we are a conservative family. How can I tell my daughter to travel? Please. I said, why? Specifically with regard to the reservation, it would be good if you tell what your thoughts on that are. Okay. <clears throat> See, um, I just finished a, a concept note for one of my client in government in where we actually, I highlighted. So in China, we have a mandatory reservation of 1.5% in the private sectors. And if you don't comply, the panel, you have to pay a certain amount of funds uh, to a, a dedicated disability rehabilitation funds. Unfortunately, the matter of fact is most companies prefer to pay these charges rather than actually complying with this mandatory quota. Okay? We have similar stories in, in South America. We have similar stories in, in some part of Asia. But, okay, now uh, another question regarding the public awareness. I think we're all an ambassador from the disability communities or from the other, you know, people like EMC. So we need to talk and speak at various forums. And I personally have spoken to a lot of other forums like CII, National HRD Network, like SHRM, and I, I'm again scheduled to speak at CIO Summit in Delhi on December 10th. This action is perhaps a drop in the ocean because it's very difficult to convince an organizer of a particular event to give me a slot. I just want to influence because I know it has an immense value because I remember once I came to Bangalore and I, I came across one blind girl and she was thanking me. Hey, thank you, thank you, and I didn't know, I mean, I didn't even know her, and she said, thank you, because of you, I got a job. I said, how did that happen? Because my director was sitting as part of the audience where you spoke in Bombay, and he said, if Asif can do it, why can't you, and that's why I got a job. So indirectly, you're influencing COVID. So, so and then the third question about the CSR thing, 
It, okay, now, the way it is structured, the company acts, there is no penalty prescribed. There is a mandatory, of course, 2% that it's sort of not mandatory because there is no penalty prescribed by the act that if you do not spend that. But, however, the act states clearly that if you're not able to spend that money of CSR, you need to put it in your annual report. And unfortunately, I don't think no good companies would like to mention that in their annual report. So I, I strongly feel each one of us has to do a better job in being the brand ambassador to carry this movement forward towards an inclusive India. No, I think uh, as far as the corporates are concerned, I think uh, it's changing a lot. I know there's a lot of work still to be done, but if you talk to most of the corporates, I think there's a lot more openness towards hiring uh, people with differently able people. I think there is work to be done in terms of, uh, I think, bridging the gap of what they want and what uh, skills they bring onto the table. And also, just as I said, it's a, I think it's a mindset. I think the mindset has to change, which is bigger than anything, in my opinion. So I think this kind of forums, sessions, and more talking about these things, I think when the mind changes and when we get the right culture, I think a lot of these things will happen. But I can tell you one thing, the corporates are much, much open than what they were before in terms of uh, looking at these different label people. Absolutely, sir. It's a journey, of course. It just has initiated. But Swati is right about career progressions. I mean, I remember uh, after four or five years, I wanted to change, just like in Minan, aspirations. And I even made it to the final round of interview. Then again, I was told, hey, let me have an informal chat with you. We feel internally discomfort in hiring people with disability. And mind you, this is the top 500 fortune companies in India, which is actually stating that. But I am firm believer it will change. Great, yeah. Uh, an excellent panel. Just a quick answer to somebody asked about the census. We have the National, uh, National Sample Survey where they get some details. And I should also, again, not bragging about Kerala, but we have a full-fledged disability census which has been going on uh, for the last uh, three months. We started in June. It got a bit delayed because of the rains and the festivals. It's, except for one district, it is completed now, and they, we've done three... Uh, three rounds in each place to be sure that we don't miss out. And I think the results will be out in the next uh, month or so. The, the other one which, uh, which I thought I should be, awareness was something you asked about. I think awareness will have to happen from all of us. Okay, I, I am a parent of uh, two deaf girls, okay? Uh, I'm educated, my wife is educated. But until they were two and a half, we didn't know that they couldn't hear, right? Because the doctors kept telling us that don't worry, it will be okay. And this is 25 years ago. Right? But the thing is today, one of the first things we did after Nish, Nish was set up is we conducted training programs for pediatricians. We did training programs for pediat pediatricians wouldn't come. Then we actually uh, barged into their conferences and we were making presentations. So I think each of us will need to work on that. And each of us will need to talk to people. Also, this thing about, you know, there's a child with a disability in the family, we don't talk about it, should stop. We need to talk about the positives that are happening. And one of the big, big learnings for me today and yesterday are that we have so many success stories that we can talk about. Let me conclude with one thing again on Nish. We are going to start a higher education program, which means a degree level program for persons with autism. We will start off this year on a trial basis with five children who have completed plus two. Okay, we will look at how it goes, and then, you know, the challenges are high. We are not finding too many places where it's happening, but we've decided we will do it because we did a similar program for the hearing impaired uh, about seven, eight years ago. We did a BSc Computer Science and a Bachelor of Fine Arts for the hearing impaired, which is running successfully. So we're very clear. We're sending our people around, trying to get the details, but we need to ensure that there are children who complete class 12. Right? So I think all of us, if we work together, we work together as parents, we work together as corporates, we work together as government, and as persons with disability. I'm sure that a few years from now is going to be a completely different world. And each one of you who are here, we're about 800 to 900 people here, talk to 10 people about it and make them talk to others. 
And one thing is government needs to change. I'm happy that the present government, there are some changes that are there. I'm seeing positive thoughts with the minister and the secretary, etc. Let each one of us say that it is our personal mission to take it for. We are already nine minutes late. And if I'm a couple more minutes late, I'm going to miss my flight. So thank you very much. Excellent panel. Sir, I, I hope there are enough learning. Seconds. Yeah, please, please. Ha, sorry. Um, he has to have the last word. Sorry, Nominate I'm so sorry. Take sorry. it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> May I ask each one of us to close our eyes and say aye. 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 I just, since I belong to land of Kolkata, I wanted to say this as an inculcating things. Swami Vivekanand was just sitting, and one of his disciples came to him and said, Swamiji, I have a bad news. I would like to share that. One of my relatives is just diagnosed with a disease, and he may lose his eyesight. Swamiji did not respond. So the disciple probably thought that he probably didn't listen to him. Then so he again said in a louder voice, Swamiji, some terrible news, please. He again didn't respond. He again said in the loudest voice, Swamiji, my relative is going blind. Swamiji replied, you fool. He may be going blind, but he has not lost his inner vision. So ladies and gentlemen, ignite your vision to make it an inclusive society. Ignite your vision to make a better world. Ignite your vision to transform this world with, uh, through social changes. And remember, we can. Thank you very much. Thank you once again, uh, all of you, for your wonderful thoughts. Uh, in fact, there's one thought which um, strikes me a lot. Vijay Raghavan sir mentioned that the university that they are looking at in Kerala, it's going to be one of its kind in the world. It's going to have 50% reservation. And 50% reservation is for general candidates. And that's how they are looking at it. They are looking at general candidates having reservation there and not the other way around. Now, I would request Pranesh Nagri sir who is really driving forward the corporate governance and NGO collaboration and helping us form the foundation for India Inclusion Summit, drive forward this, this group. Thank you so much. And sir, you're going to say a couple of lines? Thank you. By the way, he's a great poet, so I'm sure he goes, he's going to read something for us. Uh, I uh, personally believe that for signing on that uh, painting over there, you need to uh, deserve it and you need to contribute something to this uh, uh, place that is here. We had so many eminent and lovely people. <laughs>